Thank you. And the uh, next presentation is going to be Philip Kong from uh, GE. And uh, yeah, just have fun. Thank you. Um, so, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, I'm Philip Kong, I'm product manager and application engineer in uh, GE. So, that means I'm working both for the product line as I am, uh, and the science team in, uh, in Europe and also in Africa. Um, gonna, I'm, ta I'm taking part of the critical infrastructure communication, so um, I guess everyone heard about GE before, but uh, maybe not the structure. Um, you know, we, have, you know, we have some strong competitors coming from here, so um, you may not be familiar with all the, the GE, uh, uh, GE entities. So I'm going to go through this, I'm going to uh, explain you what portfolio we represent in the telecom area, and then how we are um, slowly but uh, uh, surely integrating the, the Nessun technology in, uh, in our portfolio. So uh, let's get started. So you probably heard, it, it's not so relevant for today, but there, is, there are like three entities now in GE. Uh, we're going to change the our colors for the, for the logos. Uh, there's a new entity called GE Vernova that uh, encompasses everything that uh, deals with energy. We did, so GE Vernova is our, like, from production to uh, transmission and uh, distribution of uh, energy, as well as conversion and everything. Um, within that, um, uh, that entity, there's a GE Grid Solutions. So uh, that's still a big piece. If you look you know, by the numbers, it's, uh, it's a big entity. Um, so you know, Transmission, uh, transmitting and, uh, and converting and distributing energy. It's uh, basically this. And uh, if we go uh, deeper in the, the organization, there's uh, another entity we belong to that is grid automation. So, yeah, I'm going to go a little bit more in detail. So, we have two groups there's our protection automation and control. That's um, more, you know, real time uh, control of the grid. Uh, so, everything related to protection, for instance, uh, falls into this, uh, in this area. And then on the right hand side, you have uh, things that are more related to maintenance. Um, so asset management, uh, uh, monitoring and diagnostic, you want to see how your system is aging, every component is, uh, is doing, if it's doing well or not, and you want to do some predictive uh, analysis and see or uh, improve your, uh, your maintenance. So that's not the topic of the day. Uh, we are uh, also about critical infrastructure communication, and we, even though we are sitting in this uh, side of the, the business, we are actually uh, serving all all of it. Like uh, we're providing telecom solutions for all those uh, those applications. And obviously, um, you can imagine that everything of this is uh, pretty sensitive in terms of telecom. So that's why we are critical infrastructure communications. Um, we are very quickly uh, based in uh, four different locations as a headquarter, we are operating globally. Uh, we have a main headquarter in the US, we have uh, another one in, uh, in Vancouver, uh, uh, it's more of a factory in Istanbul, and in Paris where I come from. So we have uh, different uh, specialties, products that are coming from different places, but actually we have a sort of unified um, organization now. So, what, what does the grid automation uh, does? Uh, just as a background, um, you can classify the different applications in three categories. There's monitoring, so it's sensing, acquiring data. Then there's a protection, so these are all automation systems that, um, that can analyze the data in real time and then react. Um, and then there's the control uh, type of application where you have a bit more time, you kind of centralize the information, you send it to a to SCADA system, for instance. And um, as you know, communication guys, we mostly serve the two, uh, those two parts, so the protection, uh, which is very, very sensitive uh, to time, and then there's uh, control as well, so reporting every solution that can report uh, data to, uh, to a control center. So we do it with uh, several lines of products. We have uh, uh, optical products, uh, multiplexers, uh, you know, PDH, SDH, Solet, uh, MTLS, TP. Uh, we do also, um, uh, yeah, does it work? Yeah. Uh, this is like, I would say, a regular, I should, I should say that, but it's, uh, it's Ethernet routing and, uh, and, and switching uh, for such patients, so with critical mission uh, uh, situation. 
Then we have teleprotections here. Uh, if we go more about to the distribution, and I will come back uh, just the slide after, we have the wireless portfolio. Um, and then we have a poor line carry uh, portfolio. So the, the one on the right is, um, is a high voltage PLC. So it's a different thing, it's a dark band, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a different animal, it's a very, very specific animal. Uh, for that type of application. But for about 10 years, we had um, uh, the product on the left, which is called the Powercom. Um, we built it, uh, we made a lot of trials and rollouts and so on. Uh, but that's mostly, you know, it, it's sort of a the proprietary uh, solution because we kind of tweaked an existing solution from the market that wasn't really standardized, by the way. Uh, so we can achieve what we needed, which was the long range. We talk a lot about long range today. Uh, we have a very specific compromise to find between the, the reach and the performance. Um, actually, there was a race of speed uh, in, in the industry, in the BPL industry, to have a gigabit per second. We were not really interested. So it's been 10 years. <laughs> We've been waiting for you know technology that could really meet the, our expectations, which is um, that flexibility that allows the long distance, compromising with the performance. Because uh, if you talk about scalar, you don't talk about uh, you know gigabit per second. It uh, can be very uh, a very tiny uh, uh, traffic, but you need to reach. You need the reliability. You need to be sure that uh, if you connect your devices, they will really connect. Uh, you can't fail. Uh, because uh, especially if you use it on medium voltage and you try to connect that substation to that other substation and the cable goes on the ground, there's no way to repeat. So if you don't have the reach, maybe you will fail, you won't be able to go further, so you have to think about another technology. So that's the end of uh, you know, BPL for the video story for that application. So we we're very uh, conscious of that. and um, uh, So if I, I, I zoom in, uh, let's say the distribution path, which is, uh, is of interest uh, today. Um, we have, let's say, a flagship product, which is uh, it's a platform, it's called the, the NTS Orbit. And um, it's actually, well, we say the, the leading wireless uh, platform for utilities. We, by, by the way, we don't operate only in utilities, we do um, heavy industries, we do oil and gas, and uh, uh, transportation, and uh, water waste, and, and, and some other um, industrial applications. But if we focus on industries, we have uh, one of the most versatile platform that can be used on the secondary distribution um, to do those applications I was talking about. So, this is a, a line of product with uh, multiple form factors. Uh, you have uh, from the small device that has only one interface of each to the, the one uh, in the middle that can be that has many variations so I will, I will show that later uh, we even have an outdoor uh, options for poles and yeah, walls and so on uh, of course we have GE we have, uh, this is you know, industrial grade products uh, it's recognized in different ways it's an all this long time long lasting product it's a Robust, mechanically speaking, but also for EMC and all the you know matches all the environment of substations like medium voltage substations. Um, Cyber security is also part of it. Uh, you know, robustness, uh, mechanical robustness is uh, is one thing, but cyber security is, is also part of the organization. So we have uh, one of the you know greatest um, uh, framework for cyber security. Uh, this is something that has been a concern in the US since more than 20 years. Probably know why. Uh, we in the US they developed some uh, some standards early on that we we, we meet, and uh, we have uh, one of the better often this uh, in, in this spectrum. Um, this is a platform we used to call it wireless platform, and uh, we're going to have to find a way to call it now because the idea is to bring the you know the nascent technology in it. So is it wireless? Is it not? Is it wired? Is it uh, some sort of wireless over wires? I, I haven't found the definition yet, but um, let's say this is still a platform. It's a router. It's uh, you have uh, all the you know the the functionalities you can expect from a router, um, and um, you know, um, we we have a, a variety of uh, of options. 
if you look at the, the bottom uh, logos, there are pro probably some, maybe if you're familiar with the, the, the American market, there are some uh, you know, cellular uh, alliances and, and, uh, and options. But then, uh, for, especially for the German market and the Northern, uh, Northern European market, um, we're part of the 450 lines, so we have uh, um, cellular modules that can be hooked on the, on the future uh, 450 Connect uh, infrastructure that is building up in, uh, in Germany. Um, we are ready for, for that and we think that's, uh, that's a good option. We are advocating a lot for private IT and also for BPL, and I will show you how. So the, the, the product is, um, if I take the, the one from the middle, that's uh, the, the most versatile one, you can select uh, different you know, interfaces, uh, Ethernet, serial, we do a complete uh, serial to Ethernet conversion. Um, and then you can have up to two, or let's say wireless, we have to change the name, but uh, transmission capabilities. Um, so we, we come from the narrowband space, we used to do VHF, UHF, Licensed now, band. Um, we do a license in the in the in Americas. We added Wi-Fi and cellular because we understood that there was a growing demand for broadband. And uh, now we have decided not to keep the same product, uh, the, pro the, the that's a single product or a single transmission or BPL. We instead we are importing the BPL into this uh, this product. That's going to be just an, an, another interface that you will be able to select and order. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the rest of the product will be exactly the same. By the way, the OS is the same on all the, all the form factors, so you have a, it's exact, it works exactly the same, it's the same router. Uh, maybe one, one example, so uh, as I said, we, we cover different applications. But I'm going to focus on one, which is a uh, medium voltage. Um, one of the interests for us is probably the automation. You understand grid automation. But uh, we know that there are more than uh, just automation uh, services to, to pass. So um, in a substation, you can uh, also have uh, some, some meters to, to connect. You can have an AMI gateway, maybe, uh, that, that, is, uh, that is there and you want to uh, provide a backbone to that uh, AMI system. Um, you may have uh, local sensors, uh, yeah, you can do some, something on, on the ELV side. And there are things that are related to monitoring, it's just like yeah, monitoring, like uh, acquiring data, sending data, so it's critical, but it's not as, as much as uh, control. So we made five years ago, probably uh, already a, a prototype, a prototyping uh, a system where we uh, we were controlling the switch gears. Uh, so you, you understand that you know controlling switch gears on medium voltage is pretty sensitive. You really need to have a very short uh, response time. You need to be very reliable. And this is the reason why we think that um, only a mix of technologies can really achieve this. As it was already said before, the, the, the mix of technologies is really the key. Uh, we're not here to compete. Uh, with the cellular, we actually used to be wireless people uh, for most of us, um, but we think there are some uh, there are some schemes, uh, some uh, architectures that need to be considered to make the the communication more reliable. So, if I take some examples that already exist, uh, we have um, in the product we can do like dual uh, dual cellular, so we can have. Uh, you can have one, cell, uh, one cellular module and then you can roam from uh, one SIM card to another one, so from, uh, from one carrier to another one, but it takes time. If you have two, then you can be attached to two, uh, two carriers. It can be a private, like a 450, uh, 450 uh, private network, and then the regular commercial uh, carriers. So you can switch over, fail over very quickly. Um, then we have, since we come from the license now band, uh, we, we know that we can also um, make it more reliable, even though, I mean, it, it is a, re a reliable solution, but uh, uh, we can also extend the type of services. So the, the two things about uh, complement ID for me is extension and resilience, but extension can mean two things. It can be the extension of coverage, where, where you don't have uh, uh, wireless coverage, and I think uh, you gave the answers. A good uh, um, uh, examples. 
And there's, uh, there's the case where you want to just add some extra services that are maybe less critical. So in that case, um, here, you can have a, 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 an element system that only carries the scalar. And then uh, through the cellular, you can pass the, you know, some extra, like a CCTV. Uh, or you can even reconfigure your RTUs or IEDs that are connecting behind the, uh, the, the remotes. Because you know HTTP and so on, that's uh, that 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 that's, uh, that consumes uh, quite a lot of, uh, of bandwidth. So, but it's less critical to have access to your RTU just to make a reconfiguration or make a check or diagnostic once in a while than the real SCADA traffic that really has to be continuous and uh, and absolutely reliable. So you can add some extra services to the cellular, but you can also fall back. In case you have any problem on the on the narrowband space on the narrowband uh, network, and now I come to uh, what's maybe more interesting uh, for today. That's uh, cellular and BTL. So I see a lot of uh, interest in this area. Again, there's uh, a possibility to extend. Uh, I mean, there are blind spots. Um, cellular networks they they are made uh, once uh, one moment. Once you have set up the base stations, it's it's over. You can't change things. And, uh, either you move your devices to somewhere where you get uh, the signal, but then uh, you can't move the transformer with it, um, or you just uh, right here, you go uh, with your device, you pick the signal from outside or somewhere where you get uh, a good connection with uh, with wireless, etc., and then you just extend with BPL to uh, the blind spot, the place where you want to. Typically. From, in, from outdoor to indoor, there are plenty of places that are, you know, Matthias has uh, uh, spoken about, I think. Um, and then about the resilience, and that's probably you know, where um, I come back to the, the, the story of the remote control of switch gears. If you really want to have something reliable, you, you can't just rely on just a single point to point, uh, point to point, to point uh, see, uh, connection. So, one scheme could be to have, uh, like, let's say, wireless backbones as LTE, and then you use BPL uh, just to uh, as a sort of back backfeed. So uh, the BPL connection will probably remain stable for for, for a long time, uh, and then uh, if ever one of the backbones is failing, you can switch to the other one. So that you know that gives a lot of um, options for resilience of the of the network. And um, I think that's it. So the, the last thing I wanted to comment is that, you know, why Nessum, I don't have much slides on, on this, I didn't want to go too much into the technical details, but, you know, long distance, that's something we've done for a long time. We, uh, we have a product that can go up uh, to sometimes five kilometers. Uh, we already did it on one go, one hop, um, but it was proprietary. There was no, I mean, so, we needed something uh, based on the standard, based on an alliance uh, with the coexistence and, uh, and some guarantees on the ecosystem. So that's uh, that's why we, we joined the, uh, the alliance and we're very uh, happy with it. So thanks.